It's Russia's most important secular holiday. Moscow celebrates 78th Victory Day Parade at the famous Red Square. The message and the timing, however, couldn't have been more dire. The Russia-Ukraine war seems to only be escalating with Russian President's strong address in which he drew comparison between the West's ideology of superiority to Nazism. Putin has long maintained that the war in Ukraine is solely because of West's invasive plans. He draws parallels with the current wartime situation and Adolf Hitler's invasion of Soviet Union in 1941. The West's goal, as per Vladimir Putin, is to achieve the collapse and destruction of Russia and break the system of global security and international law and strangle any sovereign centers of development. The address comes just a day after Russia's biggest drone attack targeting capital Kyiv was reported and shelling other cities as well. Let's listen in to the Russian president's uh, speech parts of that address. Для нас, для России нет ни дружественных, враждебных народов ни на Западе, ни на Востоке. Как и абсолютное большинство людей на планете, мы хотим видеть будущее мирным, свободным и стабильным. Похоже, они забыли, к чему привели безумные притязания нацистов на мировое господство. Забыли, кто разгромил это чудовищное, тотальное зло, кто встал стеной за родную землю и не пожалел своих жизней ради освобождения народов Европы. Joining me here on the program, Mr. Anil Trigunet, former ambassador. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, uh, Ambassador Trigunet, for joining us. I want to begin by asking you that, uh, you know, what you make of the statements that Vladimir Putin is making today, because it's quite interesting that here is a man who is now blaming the West of being expansionist, of, uh, you know, having plans to destroy Russia, comparing that to Hitler, so in a way, turning the narrative around. But do you see this as a peace overture? Do you see here a man, uh, you know, admittedly now looking like as if he's fighting a losing war and the realization has dawned on him? One thing we have to probably remember before I say anything is that in the 20th and 21st century, none of the superpowers have won a single war. They have been defeated in most of the wars. We have seen what happened to the United States in Vietnam, what happened to China in Vietnam, what happened to USA and Soviet Union in Afghanistan. And, you know, Iraq, Libya, all these wars, which all these superpowers have reached, they have lost them. So there is no doubt about it that there is a war, any war that is dragged beyond 10, 15 days is generally a lost war in that sense of the term. So there is definitely a stretch, but this uh, Victory Day is a very important day for the Russians and mostly for the uh, Western world and everybody else, because they all uh, worked together in this war when they defeated Nazi Germany. So the the Nazism is something that is very can be easily extended. And if you remember in the very beginning, uh, President Putin often used to say that there are Nazi elements in Ukraine, whereas Ukraine is also a Jewish country, many of them are Jews there. But he used to blame, and there have been some, uh, some I mean, references to Azov Battalion and others who had those, they were also uh, sanctioned by the Americans. So uh, for being these Nazis activities. So I think that th this is uh, in that context, but what he is trying to overturn and tell the world that the real war has been unleashed uh, on Russia, and this is against Russia. Now they want to decimate Russia uh, completely. And he said the civilizational uh, uh, civilization is at a turning point as far as he's concerned. So he had made some very um, important points. Unfortunately, those same arguments can also be, uh, you know, turned around and used in the war against which has been waged against uh, yes. Kiev. So that is also quite possible. So I think, but at the same time, I think that uh, whatever is happening, for example, the Russian ambassador, when he was going to lay the wreath at the, uh, in Poland, uh, he was not allowed. He was stopped by uh, the people there. There are several of these uh, memorials have been destroyed, uh, which were remembering this victory of, uh, you know, the normal world against the Nazis. So I think that there are there is a mixed uh, signal here. Yes. Uh, Putin is you know, why this is interesting, uh, Ambassador Trigunet, is because this comes close on the heels of what happened with that, uh, you know, alleged drone attack 
uh, at the Kremlin. Now, uh, we see that here is a Russian president whose also his popularity is also plummeting. Do you think this was meant for the domestic audience to evoke some sort of a national pride? Because even there, he seems to be losing ground. So, is this a desperation somewhere at least to keep that together uh, after, you know, like, like I said, his popularity seems to be dwindling? Uh, domestically as well. So he's losing not just on one, but on, on multiple fronts. No, it is true, in fact, that every time they have this victory day, it revives the uh, the horrors of the war and the horrors of the, uh, the Nazis, basically, what they, they have conducted. And if you remember that the hmm. Stalingrad, uh, which was the siege of Stalingrad for 365, almost one year, uh, that was the worst in which, the, and in that war, Russians lost about 26 million people. So this is always invokes some kind of a nationalism and trying to stoke mm. uh, the nationalistic fervor among the people that you are standing for the country. And of yes. course, I mean, if you know that any war that prolongs is obviously the leader's uh, popularity does go down. There is absolutely, it is a, it's a normal phenomena because nobody right. wants a war to prolong. It can last for a short time and then quick, quick victory can always give you that advantage that you are looking for. A prolonged warfare uh, is uh, never beneficial for the leader. So therefore, you have to continue to invoke the people's patriotism somehow. Mm. And that is that is for sure that is there so that they stay on your side as a public. Uh, and so far, I don't see that Putin is losing the, completely the public support. That is quite mm. significantly it is there because it's the narratives that are created. Mm. Uh, mm. What narrative we are looking at here most of the time is coming from the West. Uh, English media and all. So therefore, we get carried away by that very often. But then the Russians and the others are only listening to the Russian uh, media mostly. So I think that difficulties that are uh, mounting for the people, economic difficulties, uh, the sanctions will have an impact eventually, even if not now so much. Hmm. So all those factors will have a, a, an impact on the people's yes. thinking, on the Russians. Do you see Ambassador Chagunia? The war is worth. Yes. Do you, do you see a situation where, uh, you know, Mr. Putin, after all, he was the one who waged the war to begin with, uh, by, uh, you know, uh, do you think that now it'll take for him to actually come out and call off the war? Do you think that is how there can be a closure? Or is there any other way that you envisage a closure to this now that Mr. Putin is clearly sounding defeatist? But I don't see him being sounded as defeatist. The thing is that, uh, I mean, uh, my understanding is uh, that he is not going to go under. But okay. in a war like this, a prolonged war, you always look for a face saving. Because at the end of the day, Russia still remains a superpower and it has the largest number of nuclear weapons. Uh, it has still not used it, uh, its its uh, latest hyper weapons which it has in its arsenal those are not being used its air force is not being used possibly he is keeping it in case the war escalates with the nato countries so that may okay. be the reason that he is not using his full force uh, in this war as of now uh, of course he has lost a lot of men and that is hmm. a major concern for them as such they don't have a very big army. They were looking forward to move towards a smart army. So I think that the the there are several proposals that are on the table, including the Chinese one. And mm. I think that Zelensky is also looking at some way out. Uh, but at the same time, the, the positions are polar opposites. So until and unless there is a, uh, some kind of an understanding exactly how they're going to sit on the table and what is the likely outcome for it, uh, then only we will see some kind of, of course, uh, I think Putin does want this war to end. Uh, but as I always say, the war can end if the Americans are on board. Right. The war can end if the Americans are also on board. So there is, uh, you know, a lot to watch out for on that front. Then thank you so much, Ambassador Anil Trigunian, for joining us this evening.